Good morning, everybody. It's me, Tammy Devine, here for CCN Sunrise. Uh, with me today is Heather Manaski. She is um, suing a local Los Angeles law firm for uh, taking advantage of non-English speaking and poor Hispanics. Um, and you consider this law firm to be a predatory law firm, is that right? That's right, Tammy. They target this population exclusively. Um, and what, which firm is it? It's the Madian Law Firm. It's also known in Spanish as La Liga Defensora. Okay, and so um, you worked for them you're kind of a whistleblower, isn't that right? You're here to kind of talk about what happened there. Um, and now you're also suing them for wrongful termination? That's correct. Okay. Can I kind of lead us through, first of all, like how did you get to this <laughs> law firm? I mean, I think that it's okay to ask the obvious question because some people are going to be like, okay, this is a Spanish-speaking maybe law firm. You're a white attorney. Right. How did you get to work with them? Well, so that's a great question. I applied when I was working as a public defender in a small rural county in northeastern California, Lassen County. And so I had a great experience there, but it was time to move on. And I was interested in the Los Angeles area, so I was applying for jobs. And I, I saw their ad and I, you know, I figured, okay, well they probably won't hire me because I don't speak Spanish, but I believe the ad said Spanish language is not a requirement. So I applied and I got an interview. And I met with the firm's owner, Mr. Madian, and I, I This said, is Sean Maddian, I think, right? Yes, uh -huh. Sean Maddian. And um, we, had, we had a good interview. It felt right, and I, I explained that I'm an aggressive criminal defense attorney, and you know it's fine to me whoever my clients are. I just want to make sure that I'm allowed to be an aggressive attorney because I care about my clients. So you were hired in January, right, of 2018? No, I was actually hired back in October, November, but I didn't start until the end of January. Okay. And after, how long did it take before you started noticing that maybe things weren't quite right or that didn't sit well with you? Oh, it was my second week. The, your second week you started seeing some things. I, I did. And I had, I had suspicions. Um, there, was, there was nothing concrete that I... I knew was wrong until the day that I quit, um, which was early April. So I was there about two months and a week. Okay. So what was it that you that wasn't sitting well with you? Well, first, um, the very first thing is you know the different attorneys were assigned cases, and so I thought that meant we were supposed to work up those cases and talk to the clients. Instead, we were... That sounds were, logical, right? <laughs> I, I think so, and I didn't expect any other way of operating. And um, so what was happening is there was this calendaring department, is what they called it, and it was comprised of non-attorneys, and they had, in fact, no legal training. And they would assign attorneys cases to appear on usually the day before. They would say, go to this courthouse and this courthouse. It was multiple cases. And they were not necessarily your cases. Usually they were someone else's case. So a lot of the time, we would be getting these assignments. I would get the file oftentimes later than 5 o'clock the night before. And I'd be expected to read up on the entire file for all of these cases. Um, try to talk to the client and go to court and and sometimes we had the night before the night before okay. and, and yes and that that was the pattern sometimes we had advance notice um, but they would also change things at the last minute pretty frequently and and so we, you felt like you couldn't really represent your clients very well right if uh, you're just getting their file the night before maybe you're supposed to go to court with them absolutely and so I was doing my best to, to remedy that and and I was also at this crossroads of well you know this isn't my client I'm gonna do the best I can at court but I need to talk to the assigned attorney and find out what's going on with the case from them and I had various responses to that. Sometimes it was too late 
to talk to that attorney because of how late I had gotten the assignment. Sometimes the attorney would say, you're appearing on it, you handle it. The, the attorney knew zero about the case and was not going to look at the file. And sometimes the attorney said, I had no idea this was assigned to me. Wow, that's really bad, isn't it? I mean, It's very bad. And I showed up to court and I, I questioned the, there, there were several times I was told, and this was the second week again when I started to have the red flags. I was told by the calendaring department of non-lawyers my instructions to plead this client out, have them plead guilty. So I talked to them. Now, and I, who was giving you that instruction? It was a non-attorney. Okay. And so, okay, um, people not in the legal field were just like, okay, why, why can't a non-attorney say this? But that was actually a very big deal, right? It is. There's, there's um, rules against that. It's, it's illegal, in fact. It's, through it's the, the California State Bar, right? Through the California State Bar, through the Business and Professions Code of California. It's called the unauthorized practice of law. There are certain things that a paralegal could not do. Um, on top of that, none of these non-attorneys were paralegals. None of them had legal training. So they weren't even like that step below a lawyer, which is the paralegal. Right. They were just regular people, and they were giving you, the attorneys, instructions on how to deal with your clients once in court? Yes, and the instructions were always plead the client out. It was never fight the case. Okay. I mean, all they knew in their world was somehow we get the case dismissed, and, and it wouldn't be because we did any work. It would be because the DA decided to dismiss it, or we plead the client guilty to get rid of the case, okay. but, but yeah. we've collected our money at that point. Okay, so that's what it all basically came down to, was getting money from them and pleading them guilty. And the money is set. It doesn't go back. Um, right. To, right. Okay. Right. And Tammy, I, I want to say that there are some um, good attorneys there, and, I, and, and some, not all cases were overlooked, but what I was seeing was the vast majority of cases were overlooked. Uh -huh. And I was not alone in this. I regularly spoke with my fellow attorneys. They had the same issues. We wanted to approach management. We did approach management unsuccessfully as a group. And um, this is where the uh, wrongful termination suit comes in. You yes. went and you talked to your supervisors about these practices. I did. I, I talked to the head of the firm, Sean Maddian. I talked to my supervising attorney, George Rosenstock. And I talked to the firm's general manager, Gonzalo Sensores. And in fact, on that second week, I spoke to Mr. Sansores and I said, you know, I was told to plead these clients out, but when I talked to them at court, uh, they said they had never spoken to an attorney and they were told by so-and-so, who's not an attorney, that they were supposed to come here and plead guilty. Okay. And of course, I didn't plead them guilty that day. Oh, I, you, you did not? You no, would not? No, because that would be a violation of my ethical duties as an attorney. So whenever they would tell you to plead them out, you refused to do it? Co correct, unless the client had was discussed willing. the case uh -huh. and, and was at the point where they could make an informed decision. Wow, okay, all right. So, and so they fired you. Did they fire you or they forced I you to quit. resign? You quit. So the lead up to this, Tammy, is I, I made several complaints about this. And things seemed to get better for a little bit because Sean Maddian said, okay, you can just appear on your cases so I could keep track of them. And what I saw is that that was great. I knew what was going on with those cases uh, better than I had before, but I also saw my caseload increase dramatically. I had about 260 cases just assigned to me. From, from what was the number before? Like you about, know, I'm not sure what uh -huh. it was before, to be honest. Okay. But I saw my time in court increase dramatically. I was in court all day, and I would go home at night, and I would call clients up till 9 o'clock at night, starting at 7 o'clock the next morning, and, and my secretary would help me because she would interpret for me. Most of these clients um, spoke only Spanish or very little English. So 
So you felt like the firm was totally taking advantage of these of these clients, yes. and, and some of them were were kind of were were poor, were low income as well, and exactly. And and Tammy, um, there were other things going on as well. My clients would would say to me from time to time. Um, well, you know, when I hired you guys and I spoke with the sales team, who, who's comprised of non-attorneys, by the way, they told me that you could get the case dismissed, or they told me you could get me a lower charge, or something better than the public defender. And I said, no, I can't guarantee that. You know, I'll mm -hmm. do my best, but I can't promise you that. Which is what a regular lawyer would say. <laughs> right. And in my experience as a public defender in Lassen County, I had served mostly white clients. And I knew that sometimes clients lie. Sometimes there's miscommunications. But the clients that I had at the public defender's office would sometimes be very demanding. And they would say, you told me this, or I want this. But what I found with this Latino population is they would, they would sort of casually mention, well, the sales team told me they would get me this. And then they would just kind of drop it. They wouldn't really fight it. And what was the issue with that? that well, so that, that raised um, a red flag for me of, I think these clients are telling the truth. That along with the fact that my other attorneys, my, my co-counsel, in the firm were saying the same things about the sales team. Okay, so it's non-attorney uh, sales team, uh, non-attorneys giving advice and uh, to clients as well as to the attorneys mm -hmm. and things like that. And basically, uh, what it looked like preying on the on on the clients that, that they were serving. And yes. so it's never refunds. It was always about collecting the money. It seemed like. There were occasionally refunds, but there should have been more refunds. Sometimes they, uh, they would have a client hire them and they would make promises that were impossible. Okay. And, I, and I would have to appear in court and not only did that damage my reputation because I looked silly, but I felt like we were, we were defrauding the clients. They, they are defrauding the clients okay. um, and it's routine. It's almost every case, if not every case, and that is how they are set up. Okay, so one final question is, how can it be wrongful termination if you quit the firm? Oh, that's a great question. So, because th they were punishing me and basically, in effect, giving me a choice, um, collude with us in this illegal activity, further our illegal activity, or you're going to have to quit. Okay, and so you worked for them for how long? It was uh, from January 26th to April 20 or April 3rd. That's okay. the day I quit. Okay. So what are you asking for in well, your lawsuit? What we really wanted when we filed this suit was to shut this place down. I don't believe that they're going to say, oh, we'll change, because they set up themselves this way very deliberately. Um, I want to protect the community and um, criminal defense lawyers often don't have a good reputation, but I think it's a noble profession. There's a lot of us out there doing a lot of good, and I think it's, it's lawyers like this that make the rest of us look bad, and I feel bad for the clients. So your goal is to shut this place down? Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, Heather. I'm sorry that you went through the situation, and uh, we'll follow up and see what ends up happening. Thank I you appreciate Tammy. you being here. Now, we reached out to the Maddie and Law Firm. We're waiting to hear back from them, and we invite them to come to the show uh, anytime and give their point of view as well. That's it for now, you guys. We'll see you next time.